number three, the multiverse. This is where things get weird. We win the cosmic lottery. People win the lottery all the time. We hear about it in newspapers. But how? It's so unlikely. Because lots of people buy tickets. And one of them's bound to win it sooner or later, and then the, the newspaper's going to report that. They're not going to report the fact that no one won the lottery. So maybe there's lots of universe. Maybe we have lots of goes at it. Remember our dark board? How do we manage to hit the center? Well, if you throw enough darts, you're going to get it eventually. Maybe there's other universes out there, joined onto ours. Maybe there's other universes before ours and after ours. Maybe they're just completely separate to ours. This is, in fact, the front line of what the scientific community is arguing these days. The first question we've got to ask is, is this science? I mean, it sounds just like science fiction. We'll just make up a whole new universe. <laughs> I think it, it, it's almost there, as long as you've got something which will make all these universes. A universe maker. Because then you could, if, if this, so suppose you have a theory that predicted there will be heaps and heaps of different universes. What else does it predict? Well, it predicts this, and we can go and test that little idea. Well then, that's, that's something, at least. So we need a universe generator for it to be science. If these other universes are just out there, brute, Fact, they just exist, then you're not really doing science, you're doing metaphysics. Doesn't mean you're wrong. We'll never know if you're wrong. Right. <laughs> Can we test the idea? Well, we should be typical of all the life in the multiverse. Let, let me give an illustration. Remember the, the, the firing squad? Suppose you think, ah, I know what it is. They, there's all these other universes, there's all these other people in firing squads. And I'm alive because well, I had enough goes at it, and the only one there afterwards is me, because I'm alive. Yeah? That's, that's kind of the multiverse for firing sports. If you turned around and looked at the bullets behind you, you sh they should have just missed you, right? Because if these are trained marksmen all trying to hit you, and by chance they all miss, they shouldn't miss by much. So it would be typical for them not to miss by much. If you turn around and the bullets are all over the place, that suggests that they weren't trying to hit you. That they deliberately shot off to the side, because if they were trying to hit you, they probably wouldn't have missed by much. So if it's, that would be not typical if you just sprayed all the bullets everywhere. It's the same idea with the multiverse. We should be, of all the universes, that are alive, we should be typical of that bunch at least. That's actually quite a useful way to test them. In the end, how stringent it is, we'll have to find out. And finally, what if your multiverse needs fine tuning? We can imagine multiverses that just produce, you know, universe generators that just produce data after data after data. You could mess up your multiverse as well. Right? You've got to get that right. Maybe it's easier than just getting a single universe right, but we still don't worry about that. Finally, number four, intentional selection. Scientists have wildly speculated that in the future, a very advanced race might be able to actually do what we're talking about, like actually make your own universe. You could write a very good science fiction story about two scientists way off in the future who woo, who have a competition. They're very good at producing these universes. So what they're going to do is they're going to set off a universe each, and they're going to watch it go. The winner is whoever's universe first evolves life that is intelligent enough to speculate that their universe was created as a result of a competition between two scientists and the <laughs> You get it? So if I'm listening in and a little voice in my universe goes, you know, I reckon there's a, there's a competition, then I win. What that means is, if that's true of our universe, I might have just won it for our guy. <laughs> Unfortunately, he might no longer need this universe now, uh, so I apologise if in that last sentence I just sealed the fate of the universe and he described it. Uh, so far so good. I practised this talk, nothing happened then, so we, we should be okay. <laughs> you get the idea, right? 
Edward Harrison, who wrote a very, very good book called Cosmology, which if you want to read a book on cosmology, you read that one. He took this one step further. Suppose that that's our universe. And we, the intelligent life in this universe, start making more universes. We're going to want to make interesting universes with life, intelligent life. Perhaps intelligent life, intelligent enough to start making their own universes. And so on and so forth. So our universe could have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And what's more, however our universe came around, most of the universes out there would be there because a scientist in the next universe down decided that it would be an interesting project. What this is is sort of an intelligent multiverse. Really idea. For most of the life in this universe, the correct answer, they would give talks like this, of course, wonder why their universe was so nicely fine-tuned. And the correct answer in most of those universes would be because someone intelligent picked it out for us. Which makes it more likely that maybe ours is like that. Maybe we can trace our ancestry back to something. <laughs> but what? What would we accept as the bottom floor? Universe all the way down to infinity? Just a brute fact? Universe, here's your universe, here are your laws of nature, don't ask any more questions? In either of those cases, we'd still want to know why, why that universe, and if you want to go for the big one, you still want to know why there was any universe at all. What then? Maybe a mathematical principle. I think Stephen Hawking put it very well. He said, he asked, what is it that breathes life into the equations that makes a universe for them to describe? Mathematical ideas are all fine, but we want, we actually exist. What then? A mind? There's an idea as old as religion. <laughs> They're some of the oldest and most important questions that mankind has ever asked. You're all looking at me like I'm going to give you the answer. <laughs> but thankfully, I'm out of time. Thank you very much.